In this video, today we will talk about the what life was like for Keith Haring in the 1980s. In the 1980s, the art world was undergoing a seismic shift. The graffiti art movement, once considered a form of vandalism, was gaining recognition as a valid form of artistic expression. Keith Haring was at the forefront of this transformation, merging the divide between high art and street culture, shaping the emergence and evolution of street art during that era. Characterized by its bold lines, vibrant colors, and dynamic figures, his art created a visual language that was accessible, communicating its meaning to a diverse audience, irrespective of their cultural, social, or educational backgrounds. The accessible nature of Herring's art was and remains a bold reflection of his unique artistic vision and a powerful expression of his socio-political views. Early Life and Career Herring, who evinced a talent for drawing early on, was born in Reading, Pennsylvania, and was raised in nearby Cutstown, 130 miles west of New York City. Founded in 1815, the town had been settled by German immigrants and was home to a Mennonite community. It also boasted a university. With a population exceeding 95% white, Cutstown was a postcard version of Middle America. Herring's parents were members of United Church of Christ, and as a teenager, Herring got caught up in the Jesus Movement, a hippified branch of evangelism that started on the West Coast in the 1960s. His father encouraged his gifts by teaching him cartooning. While still in high school, Herring hitchhiked across the country, selling Grateful Dead and anti-Nixon t-shirts that he had created. In 1976, Herring enrolled in Pittsburgh's Ivy School of Professional Art to study commercial design, but he stayed for just two semesters. After reading Robert Henry's 1923 treatise, The Art Spirit, Herring moved to New York in 1978 and entered the School of Visual Arts as a scholarship student. Doubtless the relationship between Herring's political consciousness and his artistic inspirations was two-directional. Cartoons have a long-standing relationship with satire, and Herring's early exposure to them may have helped awaken his political awareness and desire for justice. Meanwhile, the pithy, easily disseminated and easily comprehended simplicity of cartoon-style art makes for a democratic and potentially unequivocal communication of political messages, making it the perfect style to convey Herring's sympathies with many social causes. Indeed, the democratic quality of his art was clearly of great importance to Herring. In 1986, Herring opened the pop shop in New York City a store where he sold affordable art merchandise and further emphasized his commitment to making art accessible to all. New York Herring's New York was experiencing a renaissance amid the chaos and crumbling infrastructure of a city left for dead. This was especially evident downtown, demarcated by 14th Street, but more like a state of mind than a neighborhood, where a cross-fertilization between the art world and an exploding club scene created a vibrant cultural synergy. Basquia, for example, designed a VIP lounge for the era's mega venue, Palladium, while Danceteria, where Herring worked briefly as a busboy, showcased performance artists like the controversial Karen Finley. Clubs became an adjunct to the non-profit alternative spaces in Lower Manhattan that programmed such fair. More important to Herring was the influence of graffiti, which began during the early 70s in communities of color in the Bronx and Brooklyn. Although considered vandals by City Hall, figures such as Lee Quinones and Dondi White were undeniably ambitious, covering entire subway trains with murals comprising futuristically Baroque tags interlaced with cartoonish imagery. Concurrent with the rise of hip-hop, this work, under the rubric Wild Style, became a ubiquitous presence on the urban landscape, inspiring both Basquiat and Herring. Like Quinones and White, Herring used the subway for his art, albeit more modestly. Instead of bombing trains, Herring made transit stations his studio, using white chalk to spontaneously generate images on the sheets of black paper that the transit authority would temporarily install in frames awaiting advertising posters. He developed a symbology that was accessible and instantly recognized as his own. Flying saucers, human bodies with barking dog heads, and most iconically, his radiant baby, an infant on all fours, encircled by lines emanating outwards to suggest a radioactive glow. These images and others like them would define his work going forward. Herring's approach, however, was hardly unmoored from art historical sources. The publicly staged nature of Christo's installations and the pictographic compositions of the Belgian abstractionist Pierre Alachinsky were major influences. The emergence of street art in the 1980s, a cultural and social revolution. The 1980s were a time of immense socio-cultural change, 
marked by significant economic, political, and social transformations, urban decay, escalating social inequalities, the AIDS epidemic, the Cold War, and the proliferation of late-stage capitalism. The cultural and social context of the decade played a crucial role in the period's means of artistic expression, aiding the emergence of street art, which challenged the norms of the traditional art world. Street art emerged from the graffiti and hip-hop subcultures, particularly in New York, carrying their subversiveness with it as it evolved into a powerful medium of artistic expression. In the evolution of graffiti into street art, the rebellion aimed purely at the often contentless act of daring that was tagged and grew into a fluent medium for protest and critical discourse. Quickly, the streets became a platform for anyone eager to voice and converse about their concerns and opinions. Urban landscapes became vibrant canvases filled with public discourse, hard to ignore even for those who continue to dismiss graffiti as a petty act of vandalism. As graffiti's ubiquity in the shared public space of a city like New York inevitably extended to form a universal backdrop for other art forms and events, becoming a vital aesthetic component of urban fashion and hip-hop music videos. For example, street art began to acquire its own individual celebrities. Street artists who gained mainstream fame, such as Keith Haring, Jane Michael Basquiat, and others, helped to champion it as a legitimate form of artistic expression. Street art's impact on the art world was revolutionary. It disrupted the traditional boundaries between the artist and the audience by making art accessible to all, not just those who frequented galleries and museums. It also challenged the notion of art as a commodity, as most street art was created anonymously and for free. Furthermore, it introduced a new aesthetic that was vibrant, dynamic, and resonated with the urban experience, influencing other forms of art, fashion, and music. Ultimately, the 1980s street art movement signified not just an artistic revolution, but a social and cultural one too, reflecting the era's complexities and challenges, and a mass desire to break free from the conservatism of art history prior. Death and Legacy Herring died in New York on February 16, 1990, of AIDS-related complications. He was 31 years old. His art is still exhibited worldwide, and many of his works are owned by prestigious museums, including the Art Institute of Chicago, the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, and the Center Georges Pompidou in Paris, France. Herring's art, with its deceptively simple style and its deeper themes of love, death, war, and social harmony, continues to appeal strongly to viewers. However, his art and activism continue to inspire and influence artists and social movements today. Both the Keith Haring Foundation, established a year before his death, which supports organizations working in the fields of art, education, and HIV-slash-AIDS awareness and research, and his art endure as a testament to art as a medium for social activism. Please support and show appreciation by hitting super thanks. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content. We appreciate you being part of our community. Until next time, take care and stay awesome.